My name is Riyad Khalif. I am currently the entertainment reporter here at Spin 1038. Um, at the same time, I work on two Australian radio stations, KISS 1065 in Sydney and KISS 1011 in Melbourne. Um, also as sort of an entertainment reporter role, entertainment producer. On the side, I uh, fill in for different presenters when they're not available. So I, I'm like a swing jock is what they call us. So I'll swing in, fill on the show and then swing back out. I'm also cover producer, video editor, website content creator, social media, media manager, kind of everything really. The entertainment reporter, my role, actually only came into existence four months ago. Um, we had an entertainment editor over all sort of five or six Communicore stations, Spin 1038, Spin Set West, 98FM, News Talk, Today FM and TX FM. So she was looking after the entertainment output on all of them. Spin 1038, which is the most entertainment centred station, it began to suffer because there simply wasn't enough um, manpower to create this content every day. And they decided they needed someone like me and they kind of got me as an experiment uh, to see you know, what, what I could be or what the role could be. And since then, we've been producing some amazing stuff, myself and Georgie, the entertainment editor, and, and some of the other team members. I come in at 1 p.m. I'm like the, the p.m. entertainment guy. And from one to say uh, three o'clock, I'll um, edit videos, assist Georgie with her on-air um, scripts, um, I'll put loads of stories up on the website. Um, I'll be constructing ideas for later in the week that we might film or that we might put up on the website. I might go to a location and interview a celebrity somewhere in Dublin. Uh, from four onwards, um, I become the main on-air entertainment reporter. I broadcast on Steve Kay's show, which is 90,000 listeners. And I broadcast on The Zoo Crew which I think has around 40 or 50,000. During those hours, I um, do one on-air live bulletin on Spin 1038, which is about two minutes long, and that's entertainment stories, clips, all found by me from my different sources. I do a mini bulletin on Spin 1038 um, at a different time, which is one single 30-second story, just a very quick update on uh, what's going on. I do one other full two minute bulletin on Spin Southwest. If I have time, I will go to the toilet. I don't normally have time though. I got into radio um, by accident initially. I was about 15 years old and I, I think I had a few weeks off during the summer holidays and I wanted to do work experience. And I went and I got work experience at East Coast FM in Bray, which is where I live. Even though it's a small local station for me, I felt like I was in an international media operation. I just fell in love with the coolness of the whole thing. I wanted to be part of it from day one. I didn't know how I was going to be part of it, but I, I knew that it clicked with me. Got a little bit frustrated in the year or two after that. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, how I was going to do it. The idea of being in a radio station as any role, let alone on the air, was just like unfathomable, fathomable to me. I couldn't see myself doing it. See, I talk for a living and I can't even say the words. <laughs> I went about doing it myself. If they weren't gonna put me on air, I was gonna put myself on air. If I save up my pocket money for long enough and my small little weekend job, um, I can afford a small transmitter, an antenna, a few wires. I had a, a notebook laptop for I think two months after I ordered it on eBay and it was like all oh, my Christmases had come at once. I knew exactly what it was when the guy knocked on the door. I came, grabbed it off him, slammed the door, opened it there and then in the hallway. And um, I, I couldn't even wait for my dad to get home to erect the antenna on our roof. And I plugged everything in and I tried it out and I remember playing a song. I think it must have been Love Shack by the B-52s, I think they're called. So I played that and so I, I, I had it on, on loop. So then what I was gonna do was run out of my house to the front of my estate and I had a little radio and I tuned in the frequency that I had. I had it on 100 FM because uh, there was no station on that frequency at the time and I could hear my radio station on the radio. That was my first experience in radio and 
Um, then from there I just decided, in, I did a really, really, really bad leave insert, so I couldn't get into any of the uh, traditional CAO courses. I knew I had something to give, just not in, in the way that the Irish government and the Irish education system wanted me to. I uh, got a, a position, um, a place in a course in Dunleary College of Further Education. I did two years there, radio broadcasting and advanced radio broadcasting, that was a FETAC level 5, FETAC level 6. After I finished that, I was like, oh shit, I haven't got a degree. I looked at a course in Ballyferma College of Further Education, which was media production and in particular radio. You can do an add-on year and get the big degree and this is a degree that half of the media industry in Ireland has. It's very prestigious and I knew it was what I wanted even though it was going to take me uh, three more years. So altogether five years in college. But all through those years doing the HND, the FETAC and the degree, I was working in this building. I managed somehow to get myself a one week work placement in 98FM which is in this building too. All of the old um, thank you cards from past work experience students on their shelf. I thought, right, I want to be remembered. So I went and bought the biggest, most garish, bright yellow, ugly yoke of a card and wrote, thank you guys, if you ever need help again, here's my number, put my number on it. And I could see them, they placed it there and it was just, you couldn't miss it. Every time they walked into their office, it was gonna be a reminder that this guy Riyad was here and you need to get him back. Lo and behold, three, four days later, they called me and they said, are you still looking for that second week work experience? And I said, yeah. And then they got me in through um, just going to the toilet and meeting people on my way to in, through spin. You have to walk through spin to go to the toilet here. I told them that I really want a job here. And um, they said, okay, we're going to train you up in news. I trained up in news. Uh, they, they wouldn't put me on air as a presenter. And uh, after a year of training in news while doing the 98 stuff and while doing college, I went on air for the first time on a Sunday doing news and completely bombed. So that broke my heart and I thought, that's it, that's the end of the radio career. But then they said, no, we still see something in you. So I then began producing shows, which I did really well in. I brought shows to their all time high that they were never at before over the two, three years I did them. Got into presenting, which was my dream from day one. I did my f first commercial radio show the day before I turned 19. So here I am now. I ended up as entertainment reporter because it was a full-time gig that was going. I was out of my degree, I needed full-time work and it's, I, I can edit and stuff so I just fit in that gap I think. The biggest name that I know I've interviewed is David Guetta. Um, I went to Abbey Road Studios in London, the famous Abbey Road Studios and um, I was there for his the launch of his new album and he was there in front of me only a couple of metres away from me playing his new songs on his laptop to me. Another recent one I did, I flew to Berlin uh, two weekends ago to interview the uh, Las Vegas boys Imagine Dragons. Pretty much everyone that was on The X Factor, I've done Alexandra Burke twice, Oli Murs three times, Misha B, Fiona Le Lewis, um, like only a year or two after she came off the show. I'm doing her again next week or the week after in London. Oh, my number one has got to be the ringleader of Fawcett Circus, Marion Fawcett. If you can make them feel super comfortable and ask them questions that they, that will entertain them and that they want to answer, then you're flying. You've got to put, put the research in. If you want to do a really good interview, you want to watch at least four of their previous interviews in full. I usually watch a radio one, a TV one, an online one um, and a print one these celebrities are pros uh, putting out a product that they want to be seen. A lot of the time it's really them, but sometimes certain celebrities um, are just actors. Very, very good actors. You meet them face to face, they can be completely different. You turn on the camera, you turn on the microphone. Da ding bang, I'm in the room, hello, hello. I did, I asked Ollie Murs yesterday about um, what it was like for him as a fellow who loves cars and loves Top Gear, I think he's been on Top Gear, what was it like for him to see Jeremy Clarkson pulled from the show? His answer was all over the place because he was trying to dodge bullets. And I did, I felt bad for asking him, but I needed the clip. It's topical, it's now. Everyone's talking about it. If you want me to promote your gig in the three arena, you're gonna have to give me some juice. I was told that there's a high chance that I will get to interview the one and only Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins. I find that I find 
personally a lot of the um, unconventional celebrities or old school celebrities more um, interesting than the ones that are big right now. Love to interview Judge Judy. She was here recently, didn't get to do it, raging. Lady Gaga, massive fan of hers. She'd probably be one of the only top 40 kind of young artists that I'd be genuinely interested in interviewing. Oprah is absolutely number one top of the list above anyone on earth. She can come across as hard or stern sometimes, but that's just who she is. Really want to work for Oprah, to be honest with you. So I'd do the interview, try and charm the pants off her, and then I'd ask her for a gig. My advice for someone that wants to get into radio or media in general um, is work hard and don't give up the usual cliches, but it's so true. So as a young professional who's learning your trade through college, um, putting yourself out there online, um, trying to do free community radio type stuff, what you need to do from that step on is to try and find the individual who's going to be like your guardian angel. There are people in radio at the moment who don't give a flying feck about you or your career. They only care about themselves. But there are some people out there that genuinely want to help you, and uh, me being one of them. If someone has the balls to ask me for help, I'm gonna go out of my way to help them. I regularly have three hour phone calls with stu a student on the phone um, at night time when I get home from here at 10 at night, because I know how hard it was. And thankfully I had two or three people that I'll always remember were the individuals that were like that for me. Right now, there are so many platforms out there for you to um, broadcast yourself. I mean, the tagline of YouTube is broadcast yourself. Set up a YouTube channel, start vlogging or blogging about things that you're interested in. Don't do it about stuff that you're not interested in because it, first of all, you'll lose interest real quick, you'll fail, and um, you won't be admired by other people, you won't get a following. Number two is um, bang on doors find out who are the key people in radio stations that are what I like to call the gatekeepers. These are people that allow people in or out and, and hold people from coming in the first place. Program directors, assistant program directors, high up producers, high up presenters, anyone that you can use to, to get your way in there, send in a demo. If you don't hear back, ask for feedback. How can I make it better next time? Don't just give up. You can annoy people, but annoy them in a polite way. If you go into a radio station proving that you've done community radio for free, you've done the YouTube, you might have a blog as well, and you're working full time or you're in college, the manager is going to see, you know, this person is a long-termer. They're not just in it for the fame, because you don't get famous from radio. They're in it for the pure love and passion of making good radio. And we can train that person into being a great broadcaster, a great producer, a great whatever. I wasn't readily given a job. A job opened up, I had to apply for it, and I auditioned, and I interviewed, and I, I did four interviews for the job I have now. The good thing, though, is that there are new areas in radio that are opening up. Radio, as an industry, is panicking because everything's going online. Entertainment, my job, basically. Entertainment stories on the website, entertainment video content, entertainment on-air inserts, social media is exploding and all these radio stations have now got to compete not just for Jane or listenership figures but for reach on Facebook for unique um, page clicks and users on the website there's now a gap in the market for someone to come into radio that's not necessarily traditional on-air presenter so what I'd say is upskill make yourself have skills that the current people in radio don't have because they didn't need to have them. Oh my God, she can edit on Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, these really professional edit softwares. Oh my God, she can do audio editing on Adobe Audition as well. She knows how WordPress works. She can publish amazing looking articles that are witty and funny and engaging and shareable. These are all aspects uh, that I never knew uh, mattered or that people cared about until this year or two years ago, it's just exploded. Everyone is at each other's necks. So now is a really, really good time to pitch yourself as this new media god or goddess that can make a station go head to head with a, a big player like Spin, 98, 2FM, all that.